Hi everybody, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Ryan Wilk from Ready & Newman PC. Uh, we're an immigration law firm here in Houston, Texas. Uh, I wanted to come to you briefly today with a short update on some USCIS policy changes regarding I-140 ability to pay. And so generally, with any I-140, to have that document, to have that form approved, uh, the applicant, the company has to demonstrate that their alien has the education to qualify for the, for the position, has the experience to qualify for the position, and then lastly, that the company has the financial ability to pay uh, the wage from the labor certification. And so, um, first point, USCIS has formalized some longstanding policy, uh, informal policy. Uh, by and large, they've taken one older memo with a newer court decision. They've kind of combined those two to, to give us a more friendly arithmetic and more friendly analysis to apply to these cases. Um, another is that USCIS has given us some guidance related to unaudited financial statements. So typically the government wants to see either like an SEC filing, uh, your tax returns or a, an audited financial statement. Uh, oftentimes a company might have poor looking tax returns and the government has come back and said, okay, if you can give us an unaudited financial statement, again, these documents are submitted under a penalty of perjury. So if you can give us a uh, unaudited financial statement along with your tax returns, we'll take a look at both of those numbers and then generally give you the benefit of the doubt if one comes back different than the other. Uh, just quickly, tax accounting is a little bit different than gap accounting and so the results with those methodologies might be different. So if you're able to uh, present those documents maybe in situations where the ability to pay uh, isn't so great for the company, uh, the government might be willing to, to again, uh, give you the benefit of the doubt and approve that case. Um, another is that they've come out with some guidance on arithmetic, how they want to apply certain types of arithmetic when we're looking at cases. Um, I won't bore you on the details, but it's essentially going to come down to if you're trying to prorate a wage in a given year, they'll allow you to do that. But if you're going to do that and you're going to want to show that the company's net income is what overcomes uh, whatever wage liability might be in front of you uh, as it relates to this I-140 ability to pay regulation, um, they're going to require you to prorate the net income as well. They won't require you to prorate the net assets, and nor would they prorate any W-2 wages that have already been paid. So just something to consider. And then lastly, um, and this is still something that USCIS hasn't given us, you know, where does this authority come from? But oftentimes they will issue what I call an ability to pay all or an ability to pay across the company um, request for evidence. And so this typically in any given I-140, we do have to show the ability to pay for that given individual's filing. Um, the government might come back and say, hey, we see you've got five, 10, 20, 50, I-140s that you've already filed, go ahead and show us that you have the ability to pay all of those cases for the approval of the just this one case. And so in the past, it might have been that we had to do a decade's worth of analysis. And so let's say this individual who we've just filed for, they have a 2022 priority date, but you've got 50 other employees going back to 2012 um, who have I-140s as well. In the past, we might have gone all the way back to 2012 and run a company-wide analysis uh, from 2012 unto present. And that's gonna take you as the client, me as the attorney, it's gonna take us a lot of time to get that for really something that doesn't prove anything to the government. And so with this new policy guidance, they've come back and said, okay, if this case's priority date is 2012, we don't need to see everything going back. I'm sorry, if this case is 2022, 2023, we don't need to see everybody's going back uh, to 2012 uh, as an example. We just need to see from 2022 or 2023 for everybody going forward. So we don't need to look necessarily retroactively um, at these cases when we're doing an ability to pay analysis. And so uh, just briefly, there wasn't too much that came out. Um, this administration has been very friendly towards immigrants and, and immigration practitioners. And so it's been nice to see this new updated policy so that we know with a little bit more certainty going forward uh, with client matters, how we should be properly addressing this so that we can get those approvals from USCIS without seeing any um, extra burden either put on myself as the attorney getting this product out or you as the clients, as, as the employers, pulling a lot of data together that might be 10, 15, 20 years old. So um, it's been nice that the government's been uh, kind enough uh, to give us this, this help. And so uh, going forward, we'll, we'll definitely have some stronger footing to make sure that we aren't seeing any unnecessary denials um, 
from USCIS. So thanks again for your time. Again, I'm Ryan Wilk from Ready and Human PC. Uh, like and subscribe and do follow us on the socials. Thanks.